Hi, welcome back to Brain Rehab Channel, and I, Dr. Hatch, today want to talk about one of the most important thing I'll ever talk about, and that's moms. And I'm coming from someone who has not only had one mom, my first mom passed away when I was young, my second mom passed away, so mothers are my favorite topic of all. So yes, I'm a mama's boy through and through. But I, what I want to talk about is I've now been married 11 years and I've watched how a brain changes in my spouse as we see different deliveries and different babies and different growths. The mother's brain is the most incredible thing ever and I don't see or think that there's anything more incredible than to watch a human be uh, born, created, and it's all because of mamas. So what I want to discuss today is a lot of my patients come in and they have postpartum. They have some traumatic things that change and they can count it back to I could, I could sleep until my first delivery or I was fine until baby number three and bam, brain shut off. And I've always wondered why is that? What is going on in the brain? So for those of you that are tuning in and those of you that have loved ones or people that have said oh my gosh, I can pin this back, this problem, this discomfort, this issue to a certain pregnancy, you need to listen to this. So a huge research article that was performed, the link is below, in 2016 was about how much brain changes. And for those of you that have read this article, you might say, oh, I know all that information. But have you applied it? So here's what I want to teach you. Inside the brain, you have white matter and gray matter. And the nicest way to do it is the outside is this gray matter. And that's where all of the experience of mortal life exists, right? It's also highly in the hippocampus, which is where memory and emotional regulation is. And then you have white matter that connects, right? Those are the, the, the neurons and pathways that come down to the rest of the body, right? White matter, right? That surrounds a nerve so it can go extremely fast. This research article showed that there was an extreme reduction in the amount of gray matter during a pregnancy. And up to two years after. And the, most of the time, and they associate with motor movement, motor control, a lot of that's why it's so important to exercise during your pregnancy. But there's a lot less neurological control of motor function, emotional regulation, planning, memory, all of these things that make you, you, mama, gets changed when you go through a pregnancy. And why do they get more complex and more difficult? Is because they believe this is the time, these two years, your brain will change more than any other time in your entire life, even more than puberty, more than even the child's development itself, but it's happening in you. So if you've had one pregnancy or you've had 12, the ch question is what has changed and what has adapted? And these are, again, functioning in our brain. The more it happens, the more it changes and changes. At the same time, because it changes the most, Sometimes that could be for something that is bad, right? You could have an altered bad change, or it could be a change for the better. So those young moms that are learning and going through these really difficult nine months or three months after, what are you doing during that process to improve the brain function? That's what I want you to think about. That's key number one. What are you doing during your pregnancy to improve your brain? It's the most plastic. So if you need to change something, if you need to change a behavior, a situation that is bothering you, the best time to do it is during pregnancy. Then the second thing is, well, as I mentioned earlier, why are you having the problem on the uh, like nothing was wrong until baby number one or nothing was wrong until baby number three? The question is, we know gray matter decreases, right? And we're talking about neuroplasticity. Well, if you have a traumatic brain injury in the time between pregnancy number two and pregnancy number three, there is a mild traumatic brain injury, little concussion, little whiplash injury, a slip on the ice, 
um, a car accident, a mini stroke, whatever it may be, that damage to the brain will damage the neurological function within the gray matter and the hippocampus. And then you have a pre-existing issue waiting for you to go through another pregnancy and the whole body tips and shifts. We've had some incredible patients results of chronic postpartum depression or anxiety or memory loss or what you guys like to call mommy brain. Mommy brain doesn't exist in the phrase that we, it's real, right? Because we like to put a label on it. But the truth is, what's not functioning in your brain? And if there's things that we can do to shift and change your brain, you can still make adaptations and change to the cortex. So then if you're deciding to get pregnant again, the next pregnancy has little to no effect on your system and you're improving at the highest level. If it's been 20 years since your last pregnancy, your brain can still change, it can still adapt, and there might be something that's going on that caused this disruption that's now, again, leading you into when you're getting into um, postmenopause, and it's now having a drastic effect on your physiology because there was something that happened 20, 30 years ago. Can this happen? Yes, we see it all the time in our clinic. So my question to you, if you've gone the route of every hormone possible, if you tried every diet and everything changed, what are you doing to rehab your brain, specifically your gray matter, post-pregnancy and especially during pregnancy, so you can help your loved ones and your other um, daughters or granddaughters or friends that could be going through a really emotional postpartum type like experience or just nothing's ever been the same since that one child. It's not the child, it's how your brain adapted. So tune in, read the, um, the article below so you can understand it, but I wanted application. Again, our purpose here is to take an article that exists and how can we apply it, how can we use it, and there are specific brain exercises and things that you can be doing right now to improve your brain. Thank you.